And so um, it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. And although I have a brother who loves me and who will be there for me, and the last time I saw him, he said to me, Lisa, when mom goes, what are you going to do? Are you going to come here to Pennsylvania and live with me? Are you going to start your whole life over? Are you going to be able to live in Maryland by yourself? Do you have someone that you can live with? You know, because um, he's concerned about it. So, um, you know, I just, uh, I just, I just, I just feel that this is an, an important issue, and I, and I make the recommendation that if you're a young woman and you're coming into your own, I think the thing that you do learn is how to be compliant with your education, with your medication, and how to get access to care and how to make sure that you have the proper support. But there also needs to be a family discussion about what happens when your parents are no longer available, when your parents grow old. What are you going to do? Where are you going to live? Who's going to provide income for you? Are you going to be working? Are you going to be relying on disability? Um, uh, you know, uh, these basic fundamental, how are you going to continue to thrive and progress as you get older. Who's going to be your support? Do you have a network of friends? Um, uh, 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 do you have a man in your life to, to share your life with? Um, you know, uh, these are very important um, questions that, that I think particularly um, affect black women with mental health issues. And, um, you know, I'm grateful for my church. If it wasn't for my church, I really don't know um, what I would do. But you know, I'm busy trying to figure it all, the, trying to figure it out. And there's like no one really that I can talk to about it. You know, I don't. When I look at um, uh, mental health resources, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see an agency that can help me connect and find resources. And you know, I, I'm taking care of my mother now, and she's in good health. But you know, as my mother ages, I don't have the income to get a helping a, a health aide to come and take care of my mother two or three times a week while I work. I don't have those finances. That's a real, that's a real need. And although I'm fortunate, you know, to have a job, and I'm really grateful, but you know, I'm dealing with racism, I'm dealing with sexism, I'm dealing with all of those isms. And I have, and, and you know, when you're when you have a mental illness and you're in the in the employment in the market, and I'm I'm a contractor, so I'm in the private sector. You know, when we have mental illness, we are sensitive to a lot of things that other people aren't sensitive to. And you know, um, it, it's been really difficult. <laughs> you know, I'm um, I'm I'm dealing every single day. You know, with someone who doesn't respect me, I'm disrespected in my job, I'm competent, I'm qualified, but every single day when I go into work, I don't know what's going to hit me. And um, I'm grateful that I have my therapist and everything like that, but you know, I I'm grateful I haven't relapsed yet. <laughs> you know? Um, and so, it, that's another question too. Uh, uh, as you get older, what employment opportunities are available to you? Now we look a lot at, at people getting that first job, but you know, how do you build a career when you have a mental illness? And when you're in the private sector and even on a federal job, you have to deal with real life situations in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Mental is now I've never <coughs> disclosed my mental illness, but I, I think I would be really in jeopardy then. If they're treating me this bad and they don't know I have a mental illness, can you imagine how I would be treated if they knew I had a mental illness? So, um, you know, it's it's the thing of which is the thing of, it's the it's maturing into an adult in the adult world and not having the supports to help you to the next phase, to the next part of your life. And um, you know, I, I think it's an important topic to, to talk about. Uh, so, the only suggestion that I can make is that if you're young now and you know you have a mental illness, sit down with your primary caretaker and say, we have to strategize, we have to make a plan. You know, what am I going to do when my parents are not available anymore? And 
How am I going to take care of myself? Or where am I going to, that, that discussion needs, needs to be had. Um, where is the income going to come from to take care of this person? Um, and who is going to be the primary caretaker? Um, and I think it's, it's a particular thing for women because women are often not only working, many women with a mental illness do work, but they're also taking care of children and they're also taking care of parents. Who's going to take care of them? No, I don't want to make it seem as though because that for men with mental illness, the finding of a partner is easier. But I have to say, because, I, because I've seen it, that a male can have a mental illness, and he is sure to find a good woman. He's sure to find well, I'm a praying woman. for one for my son, okay? Well, <laughs> well I'm telling you. He got one, he just ain't ready yet. Okay, and not that, not that it's not. But Ben kind of like, cute, so he ain't going to have no problem once he gets but, saved. <laughs> I got one point out for I just need her to. <laughs> but the chances of a male with a mental, and I'm just saying from my personal yeah, experience, I'm not saying that it's, it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. For a male, an adult male with a mental illness, okay. to find a woman who, a good woman who will care for him and take it, is, is much more likely than a woman with a mental illness to find the same. Mm -hmm. and, that's just, and, it's, and that's the way it is, you know. Take away the mental illness, just in in, in, in the wellness community. I mean, and that's 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 the truth.